up his pelt collector. Yep. So it survives. No attacks, obviously. And uh, we do outpace him now because our Cavalier of Thorns is just that much stronger than his pelt collector. We're all Halpooner. We've got no flyers. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to check out Hello Good Game. If you're new, uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for your chance to win up to half a million gems. Go ahead and check out our gem giveaway playlist to learn more about that. Uh, while that's out of the way, we can get into today's content. It is a salt high uh, undergrowth deck mixed in with a little bit of surveil and a little bit of reanimation. Uh, so we've got a little bit of like a marmalade ice cream type situation going on here. It starts off with a one drop called Narcotic Wound. It has undergrowth, target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is a number of creature cards in your graveyard. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. So we get a lot of value out of an exile, especially in an undergrowth deck where we're having six, seven, eight, ten creature cards in our graveyard. So uh, this is really good uh, value removal for just one. We also have for two drops, Glow Spore Shaman. When Glow Spore Shaman enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into the graveyard. You may put a land card from your graveyard on top of your library. This is really going to make sure you hit that turn three land drop, right? Maloism Secrets. It has undergrowth. Search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. And it is an instant uh, speed, so you can do this at the end of your opponent's turn for the most amount of value on that. <clears throat> we have, uh, starting on our three drops, two, two mound liches. This has death touch lifelink, one, three. Whenever he enters the battlefield or deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, then discard a card. So this is going to be really good getting those creature cards into the graveyard and then still drawing from our library to keep a full hand, right? We have Laneline Prowler, Death Touch Lifelink 2-3. You can tap it to add one mana of any color uh, to your mana pool, which is really helpful when fixing our mana and even just ramping, right? We have Disinformation Campaign. When Disinformation Campaign enters the battlefield, you draw a card and each opponent discards a card. Whenever you Surveil, return Disinformation Campaign to its owner's hand. Now we can maybe... Uh, Play with this a little bit, right? Uh, but moving on to our four drops, we have Golgari Fine Broker. When Golgari Fine Broker enters the battlefield, return target permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. So we're talking uh, enchantments, artifacts, creatures, stuff like that. Planeswalkers. We also have Bond of Insight. Each player puts the top four cards of their library into the graveyard, which is really good for us again. And then return up to two instants and or sorcery cards from the graveyard to your hand. And then exile Bond of Insight. So we're able to take permanence with our fine broker and then we're able to take our sorceries and instant spells with our bond of insight which is really really cool we have cavalier of thorns uh, this is one of our bigger drops for five it has reach it's a five six so very heavy and then when it enters the battlefield reveal the top five cards of your library put a land card from among them into the battlefield and the rest into your graveyard so it's helping us ramp just that little bit further right and then when cavalier of thorns dies you may exile it if you do put another target card from your graveyard on top of your library. So this is really uh, helpful because we can start cycling Cavaliers, right? Just put one in and then the next in, right? So on and so forth. We also have Bond of Revival. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until your next turn. Discovery slash dispersal, surveil two, and then draw a card. Dispersal, each opponent returns a non line permanent they control with the highest converted mana cost among permanents they control to its owner's hand, and then they discard a card. So if they only have one nuke on the field, this is a great way to get rid of that. Otherwise, we're casting it for two uh, as discovery. We have Find and Finality. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand, which we might do, but more likely, uh, we're going to use Finality for six. You may put up to two 1-1 one -one counters on target creature you control, and then all, creature gets, all creatures get minus four, minus four until end of turn. Uh, so this is a really nice sweeper, just kind of resets the game for you. <clears throat> we also have Convive slash Concoct. Convive for four, gain control of target creature with power two or less. Not very good in my opinion. However, Concoct for five, Surveil three, and then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this is really good. We also have Izani Thousand Eyed. Uh, this is another six drop card. Legendary creature Elf Shaman. 
Under oath, when he enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 black and green insect creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. And then, of course, we can pay to sacrifice one of those creatures. You gain one life and draw one card. Uh, so this is really nice. Just to go wide. You can get those chump walkers and uh, allow you to keep drawing and uh, prolong that game a little bit. We also have Villa's Broker of Blood flying. You can pay one swamp and two life. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. And then whenever you lose life, draw that many cards. So, of course, the first ability will allow us to draw two cards as well. We also have all of the lands in here. Our temples, just because we like to scry, make sure we're getting our drops. You could also incorporate Fabled Passage. Uh, the land is kind of up in the air. Make that uh, as best as you can, right? Uh, worst case scenario, just use tapped lands, <clears throat> etc. I try to stay away from using guild gates unless you're utilizing the gates for something. But that's that. So, uh, with that all being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's deck. I know I really enjoyed playing it. A couple quick reminders before we get into the footage. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to our Twitch. Uh, if you subscribe to YouTube, you're going to be entered into win half a million gems. If you subscribe to our Twitch, you're going to be entered into win a Samsung Chromebook with MTGA and all of the dress things on top of that. Uh, so it's just a way of uh, us here at Hello Good Game giving our thanks to all of you who've helped support us. And we're really looking forward to the next year and uh, growing and learning uh, alongside you guys. So thank you so much for a great year. Uh, and like I said, we're really looking forward to the next. And uh, I hope you guys kind of enjoy today's deck. Obviously, this isn't a super competitive deck. We built this to help someone in the Discord. You can join the Discord with the link down below. You can see more budget decks with the link down below. Uh, check out the description down below, I guess is what I mean to say. We got lots of cool links. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into today's. All right, in game one, we kind of got boxed out a little bit, just barely, but uh, I'm hoping that we can come back here in game two, make a little bit of a stand and showcase true capability of this deck. Two lane line prowlers, I don't really mind. We're dropping one on turn three, ramping into our turn five, and then we'll just save this death touch slash lifelink. Uh, in case it's an aggro deck, right? We never want to make the call too soon. We have nothing to drop for two, so I should have done my overgrown tomb here. Uh, I was just a little bit quick on the draw there. <laughs> okay, so Barkai Troll, he's really ramping quite nicely. We're taking two extra damage here, unfortunately. It is what it is. That's on us. Playing our Prowler. Hopefully we draw a land next turn. Another Barkai Troll. We're staring down the barrel of a bunch of 3-3s. Three uh, we're going to leave it here. It's more important for us to get our Cavalier out. That's going to allow us to ramp a little bit more. Scry one's beautiful. Discovery can go. Not really what we're looking for right now. So he's still hitting us for seven. Ah, at least seven. So we're in a little bit of a, a bind here. He's straight chilling. I think he knows he has us. That's why he's just going to take his time, right? Oh, quick jingle. He's back. Probably taking a ripper. Pulling out his tracker into an elvish recramer, elvish recramer, reclaimer, and then a ginger root. This guy's going way wide on us. Saucer shaming out. Do a little bit more milling. Nothing really good.
Let's go back into our deck here. We want a find finality and I guess a necrotic wound. No attacks. We're going to take quite a bit of damage here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage. Uh, potentially, we could trim it down to seven. Still going to hurt. But we're able to wipe his field next turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to choose to buff up our Leyline Prowler. Well, let's actually see what he does first. He's going to buff up his Pelt Collector. Yep. So it survives. No attacks, obviously. And uh, we do outpace him now because our Cavalier of Thorns is just that much stronger than his Pelt Collector, Crawl Harpooner. We've got no Flyers. Good game. And Finality saves the day in Game 2. Let's get ahead and uh, jump into Game 3 here. All right. Uh, it's going to be a quick video today. Just three rounds because it is Christmas Day. Uh, so I'd like to get some time in with the family. But let's see how we do. We go first, which is nice. Uh, the Glow Spore Shaman is going to help us set into our turn 3 land drop for our Leyline Prowler. Uh, and then hopefully we get another land just like we did for our Cavalier of Thorns. So we're sitting pretty here. We don't need to drop the Prowler uh, or the land yet. Um, one, two, that'll be three. We can keep this, yeah. We're keeping the land. Healer Hawk comes out. This looks like another finality winning match. So we're going to go here with the land. Leyline Prowler goes out. That sets us up for Cavalier of Thorns next turn. Which will help block the Bloodthirsty Aerialist. No blocks, unfortunately. Uh, I say unfortunately in a very big way. Cavalier of Thorns comes out. We do get Temple of Malady. And we just toss one of our finalities. One, two, three, four, five. This is six. That's seven. We'll keep it. We have nothing to discard our Broker of Blood right now. So we're going to just try to hard cast it. And uh, I don't know if we're going to get around his Bloodthirsty Aerialist. It's just too good right now. He de-sparks our Cavalier of Thorns, which is a pro play, uh, if I've ever seen it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're still one out. Let's go ahead and uh, Discovery. We don't really need. Let's put our Shaman out, and we're just going to help mill but hushbringer shuts that down um which is a bummer and let's get that attack in it does have lifelink which is going to help us out a little bit up to 13 but things are looking incredibly grim little score can block and we're down to three uh his bloodthirsty aerialist goes up to 12. Oh, oh my gosh. So we're in a weird position, right? We've got nothing to really take. Like we could take finality, uh, but then we can't cast it. Uh, we go this route, doesn't really work. This is the only thing that gives us an ounce of hope. And even at that, he's just way too strong for us. Uh, and then he's rocking another D-Spark in the pocket. 
Uh, so that is a hello, good game. Since that match was so quick, let's do one more final match, okay? In game three, we got absolutely beat down by Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Uh, just an impressive card if you have life gain. We go first, we have turn two handled. We're sitting on a Bond of Revival with our Broker of Blood in hand, which isn't necessarily something we want to do. We're going to mulligan. It's basically like having six in your hand with him anyways. So it's uh, no, no harm, no foul. We're going to keep our Bond of Revival. We're going to toss our Necrotic Wound. And... Let's get out and grab some land, right? We're rushing to five. We have the Glow Spore Shamans, which we hope mill some of these lands that we don't need. Just a nice slow start. Uh, that can go to the bottom because we're going to be uh, milling those next turn. We don't really need another Temple of Mystery that's kind of excessive. Let's go ahead and toss some in the graveyard. It is what it is. Risen Reef is going to wrap really nicely. Let's just keep tossing stuff in the graveyard. We can attack here and threaten his Risen Reef. Uh, it's nothing that we really care about. He's in a good position. He can put Anissa down. He can Hydroid Krasis. Uh, that's the one thing about Simic is it's very, very strong all around, especially the Simic ramp. We don't really have anything in our graveyard. Our Glow Spore Shaman's kind of whiffed on that. That's all right. Just uh, really looking for a find finality. Gaswick hits the field, the Godfather. He's getting that big draw. Let's just get that scry. Another glow spore shaman can sit there. Let's attack because Gazwick is going to make us tap out anyways. And he trades, which is incredible. He must have another in his hand, right? That's the only thing that really makes sense. There's the Nissa that we love. Yeah. Mm mm mm. <laughs> Bring out that land. For four. Crazy times we live in. Let's just keep digging. Oops, we just paid life for nothing. For some reason, I thought that would help us get our fine broker out, but we're missing another forest. Uh, or swamp, whichever way you want to look at it. And here comes the big daddy hydroid craze. This is going to blow our minds. Ready, kids? Hold on. Woohoo! You're ready to scoop. 
He's got 14 casting it for 12, gaining six life and drawing six cards. Uh, that's an absolute travesty for us. He's gonna have to discard a bunch, but he's definitely in a position just to beat us down relentlessly. We don't have 12 cards or 12 creature cards in our graveyard for undergrowth, so that's not gonna work. Um, so yeah, GG's, uh, RIP's, EZ's for him at least. <laughs> So that's all for today. Uh, this was just a quick deck that we threw together. I don't think Undergrowth is really quite a viable option for Standard right now. I tried mixing it with Surveil because when you Surveil, it's a nice way to get those creature cards uh, in your graveyard just while you're playing. Um, for me, I really liked Undergrowth in Limited. However, it is fun. Maybe in Historic, uh, you can mix a couple different things with it, right? Like a uh, a stitcher could go into that quite nicely as well however this was our undergrowth deck so i hope you guys uh, somewhat enjoyed it obviously not a competitive deck but uh, another original deck that i really enjoyed playing quick reminder to everybody before we sign off for today that uh, we're live on twitch every morning 6 a.m pst just type that in a time converter if you want to know what time that is locally for you and then you can go ahead and enter to win to uh, enter to win up to 500,000 gems on our youtube channel just go ahead and subscribe to that and then watch the gem giveaway playlist to familiarize yourself there um with that being said you can also join the discord and uh yeah we just got our twitch affiliate we do have a giveaway uh that we're going to start rolling out on our twitch our first giveaway is going to be um a samsung chromebook it's got four gigs of ram 64 gig hard drive we're going to install mtg arena on it get you a custom wallpaper that I made myself. We're gonna put some stickers and some branding on the laptop and then maybe a custom case as well. And then we're gonna give that out to one lucky winner. And to enter that contest, all you have to do is subscribe to my Twitch channel. Uh, probably just use your free Amazon subscription, right? And then you've got a chance to win uh, a bunch of goodies, right? So one uh, entry is free for the gems and the laptop is a paid entry just uh, for that Twitch subscription, right? So with that all being said, Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas. Uh, all that, travel safe, etc., etc. And I hope to see you all uh, in the new year here. We're going to be banging out some videos uh, between now and then. But uh, in case I don't get to see you again personally, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to spending another year with you. So we'll see you all tomorrow and take care.